Hello, Jeremy Chambers, Independence Acres Homestead here. It is a cold Saturday morning, but we've got work to do here on the homestead. The first thing we're gonna do is work on a beautification project uh, right here where Luca has already started uh, and get some bulbs planted. Second thing is I've got some modifications to do on our uh, Polaris snow plow because uh, it just was not working the way that I wanted it to uh, a couple weeks ago when we had our first snowfall. So stick with us today and we're gonna go over exactly what we're gonna do. to our stairs uh, by our front porch uh, it's just kind of been the collect all for junk uh, the last few years so what we're gonna do today we're gonna get this dug up and we've got some spring bulbs that we are gonna get in the ground so Luke and Josh are gonna work on this while I get the four-wheeler out and get started on the plow Okay, so here's the problem we're having with the plow. Uh, when we're letting it out and down, the, uh, the left side, or the right side here, is dropping faster than the left side. Um, and what I think this is due is because, due to is, uh, the mounting bracket, I believe needs to be shimmed down a little bit on the left side. So when I was putting this in, this is a universal kit, so the instructions were just a little vague about whether it needs some shimming in order to get this level. So um, I'm going to be shimming the left side to bring down the bracket and hopefully that will bring this right corner up. So as you can see, it's not really a lot, but it's just enough to where it's causing a problem to where I keep getting piles of rock uh, from my gravel driveway. So, um, you know, we'll see what we can do to make this uh, work just a little nicer. Okay, so here's the plan. There are three bolts holding the mounting bracket under the belly of the four-wheeler here. And um, the plan here is to pull each of these bolts, uh, the nuts, off of the threaded bolt here. And then we'll shim it up using some washers that I picked up at the farm store. Um, now, full disclosure here, I did make a mistake on this because um, it did come with some extra shims, but the instructions did say that uh, shimming might be necessary on one of the larger models of the Polaris Sportsman, not on the 450 HO. So I kind of ignored that part, um, and silly me, I pitched the extra pieces that they had put in the box to use as shims. So, I'm stuck using washers. So I got some different washers, various thicknesses and uh, various diameters to make sure we can get this done. Sorry about that. Let's 
see, you can see this thing's already starting to drop here because of the uh, tension that was on it. So, I'm assuming that this is going to make a difference here. Oof. Youch. So, as you can see, that was under an immense amount of tension. So, I think I am absolutely correct in assuming that uh, I need to put a spacer or two in here. Okay, so I'm going to start by putting a stack of four washers in here, which is just about the same thickness as uh, the spacer that came with, with the kit here. So, I'm hoping that this is going to be enough. Okay, so now it's time for the test to see whether or not this actually worked. Um, so the first symptom that this was an issue was that when I would attach the plow to the bottom of the four-wheeler, uh, the right side would pin on very easily, but I actually had to put a jack onto the left side to lift it up and, uh, and get it to attach. So hopefully this should make it easier to where I should be able to just slip the pin right in. Right side first. Right side went right in, and now the left side. I don't need a jack to do this. Oh yeah, nice, slid right in. This should make a huge difference. Okay, so now I'll get the, uh, the winch reattached here to the plow, and uh, let's see how it works. All right, so there you have it, guys. We have solved the problem of having uh, the plow dipping on the right side here by shimming that left side bracket down a little bit. So if you've got the same problem where you are not plowing even uh, with your Polaris 450 HO or any Polaris for that matter, make sure that you get that bracket, that extra spacer in the left side. It's gonna make all the difference in the world. So let's take a look at the bulbs we're gonna be planting here. You've got some uh, muscari, nice uh, purple here. And uh, we got 60 bulbs. Looks like they need to be uh, two to four inches apart and two inches deep. So shouldn't be bad at all. Uh, and then we've got a hyacinth mix here. Um, 16 bulbs. And uh, these are supposed to be four to eight inches deep. So we're gonna have to make sure these get a little deeper so that uh, they'll grow properly. All right, come on down, boys. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Hand me another one.
that should do it. No, no, don't dig down. Okay, spread it across the top. Yes, it is December 7th, it's 31 degrees out, and the boys are on the trampoline. Welcome to Mission. All right, so we've got our little bulb bed done up here in the front of the house. First time we've actually done any bulbs in this area. We're uh, hoping they're gonna grow in the spring. All right, guys, great job on the flower bed up front. Appreciate your help, high five. Woo, high five. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, hope you found this helpful. So like and subscribe, or even if you just found it entertaining, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any of our upcoming videos. Thank you so much, and until next time, God bless. Now that the work's over, it's time for a little bit of fun. Yay! Yeah.